Today's video is brought to us by Into the AM. The slap chop method of painting miniatures went viral for two key reasons. One, it followed an easy to use set of steps that anyone can execute, resulting in a painted miniature that looks pretty good on the tabletop. And two, it has a catchy yet cringeworthy name that for some people in our hobby induces a level of rage similar to those of the zombies in 28 Days Later. So when I decided to come up with a name with a slightly more refined yet still easy to execute speed painting system that I've been loving lately, there was only one logical answer. Smash Chop. Painting miniatures is a lot like riding a teeter-totter. Hang with me for a second, this will make sense, I promise. On one side sits speed and the other quality. And we need to understand that by raising one, we are lowering the other. Oh, and before we go too far down this rabbit hole, we're going to be painting a Tyranid model, the new Lictor. And I'm going to have a lot of fun trying to crank him out quickly, so we need to get started. Where was I? Ah yes, teeter-totters. Now in an ideal world, both sides of the teeter-totter would be very high, meaning high speed and high quality. But that's not reality. What speed painting methods or systems aim to do is use tricks and efficiencies to keep that speed high, but boost the quality as best we can. Which brings us to Smash Chop. My goal here is not to paint as fast as humanly possible, but I do need to be able to knock out a hero or unique model in less than one evening and achieve an eye-catching, high-quality level of work that doesn't require a particularly high level of skill to achieve. After our zenithal highlight of white over our black primer, I'm just going to smash some colors all around the model. You can do this either with an airbrush or just the biggest brush you own. The weird thing about this very important step to the painting process is the colors we choose here don't have to factor in what we want the final look of the model to be. I get that it's very easy to look at this pink and purple alien and say to yourself that this is not how you want your models to look. But you're just going to have to trust me for a little bit here because this model is not going to look like those colors when we're done. We're just laying down these bright saturated colors that will give our model so much more color, interest, and depth and give the impression that we spent way more time painting our army than we actually did. Now that step one is complete and our model is covered with bright undertones, we're going to bring out our brush and move on to step two, which is layering. Traditionally, layering is slow and boring, where we keep putting layer upon layer of paint over the model, and that's not going to get our models painted quickly. But we're going to do this with a little trick. That trick is to allow us to take advantage of those interesting shadows below. And by doing so, we're going to create a ton of interesting depth in just one layer of paint. We'll need to create two puddles of paint for our base color. One's thicker with just a little bit of water added to it out of the pot. And the second is going to be much thinner, thinned down 50 to 60% with water. And while we'll only be using one layer to paint this entire model, we're going to be using these two different paints to achieve that. For those areas we want more in shadow, we're going to use our thinner paint and more of our bright undertone will show. For those areas that are going to be closer to our highlight and would catch more light, we'll use the thicker paint. Also, there's two areas of the model we're not going to paint with a base coat at all. Any area that we consider the deepest shadow, just ignore it. Also, wherever one surface meets another, like where the skin meets the carapace, we're going to leave a line where we don't paint that to really differentiate these parts of the model. Because we have such interesting bright colors in our shadow, if our paint is too thin as we create a layer, we'll know it because we get to see an interesting color below. Not just standard black, which just kind of muddies that base coat that we're applying. Here, it enhances that thinner base coat and really gives us a way more interesting surface in just one coat. One great benefit to this system is that we have these wonderful changes in color, even though we're just using one paint to do all the midtones because of those interesting shadow colors showing underneath. As I've been experimenting with different ways to speed paint. There's one thing that I always look for, and that is a system that actually helps me improve as a painter while I'm getting stuff painted quickly. And this is an area that Slap Chop really falls short on. There's really not applicable skills in Slap Chop that will actually make me a better painter over time. But Smash Chop now that's different. You will learn how to work with both thin and thick paints. You'll learn how to transition from shadows to midtones quickly and efficiently. And you'll also learn how to use your brush to trace the details of the model, improving your brush control. And these two simple steps are the core of Smash Chop. We use a bright, 
powerful array of colors we smashed on the model and then we used layers both thin and thick paint to create incredibly interesting looking shadows midtones and highlights in just two steps. Now, if you got a lot of models to paint, you can stop right there and move on to the next section of the model. And for a full unit of termagons or something like that, I probably would. But with one quick bump up in brightness and about five minutes of work, we can really push these brightest details very quickly. And the flexibility to be able to push something brighter or just keep moving on to the next section of the model is why I've been using and evolving this mass chop system so much in my painting at home recently. If I want to make my model look even better, I have all the tools at my disposal. And if I don't, I still have a great looking model. I can set it down and move on to the next one. And I don't even always know how many highlights I'm gonna use on a particular model or area before I start painting. Sometimes I'm just ready to be done after an hour and I have a painted model. Other times I'm enjoying the process and I really want this HQ unit to look even better and I'll go over with one or two extra layers of highlights on everything or just the parts that matter the most. Now before moving on to the care paste, I need to determine the color that I'm gonna paint them which will really affect my overall color scheme. I'm a really big fan of the traditional Hive Fleet Leviathan look. I feel it's really iconic for Tyranids, but I decided I was gonna put my own little twist on it for this model. You see, Tyranids are mainly comprised of two colors, the flesh and the carapace. And because the majority of the model is just these two colors, it's important that these two colors contrast. Since our skin is so light, I'm gonna contrast that with a really dark carapace. If I also went with a light color for the carapace, the model would just kind of blend with bright on bright. I'm using a deep desaturated blue, and the most important thing is that I paint in quick lines moving from the shadow towards the highlight, leaving just a bit of that shadow color completely untouched. The only thing I'm really concerned about here is painting in lines and preserving that shadow. And because our paint covers really well, I'm only using the 50-50 mix with paint and water to paint this entire section of carapace. I find that once I get the hang of where I want my brush stroke to begin and end, this process goes quite fast. Remember, it's what we aren't painting that will make the big impact on the final look of our model. And last I checked, not painting something takes way less time than painting it. Today's video is brought to us by the company that's both saving me time and doing their best to keep me looking good into the AM. Now let me cut right to the chase. As much as I love a sweet looking t-shirt, I'm not a big fan of spending all the time shopping for one. But when I found a site run by artists always coming up with new wild ideas for a wide variety of nerdy styles, I knew I'd never have to dread shopping again. Didn't take me long to find all my favorite things. Spacemans. Sam Squanch, Melty Planet, Happy Trees, and of course, Japanese Moon. And just as important, the quality of the shirts are as great as the designs themselves. They're not going to fade or crack, and they're always going to stay super comfy. So check out the link you see on your screen and in the video description below to get 10% off your entire order of their already great bundle deal pricing. A big thank you to Into the AM for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you open that link in a new tab and check it out after the video. The carapace is a fun example of how we can use our underpainting to actually create brighter shadows than our midtones. And this ends up looking like you've done way more work and way more steps just to achieve this really unique effect. And to push it further, we go even darker on the areas we'd usually highlight. By adding in some pure black, we're really helping define the shapes and push that vibrancy because it's coming from the shadows. And because I wanna knock this out fast, I'm not worried about being exact. I'm just painting over all the same areas, but keeping a nice section of that dark blue that's showing that I'm not covering with the black. And if I wanted to stop right there, we would be done with 90% of this fairly large model in under an hour. But I did get a little greedy and decided I wanted a brighter, crisp edge highlight over all the carapace to really differentiate and define the shapes of the bug shell. I'll be honest with you, this step was a little bit of a time suck. It took me about 15 minutes alone to just edge highlight in this brighter gray blue. Because it's such a big jump from the almost pure black up to a crisp, brighter highlight, I really tried my hardest to make sure most of these lines were clean and defined. 
But this is the part of Smash Chop that's super exciting. It's only two steps. So if you wanted to add different steps afterwards or experiment with things on one model or one unit, you can do so. And even if you do make those slight tweaks, the whole unit or army will still feel cohesive because they still follow those same two steps. Now, even with adding a couple of extra steps along the way, I'm still under an hour and a half in this one fairly large model. But in order for us to really push it towards the end, these last couple of details need to be executed to really make this thing pop at the table. But luckily, no matter which model you're painting, the final little details don't take very long because they're typically pretty small. Just like adding some skin tone to all these colors that I hadn't painted yet. When a model has a very obvious feature that your eye should be drawn to, like our boy's squid face here, we really want to push it over the top and accentuate it because that's what makes the model unique. So to do that, I'm just grabbing the magenta and the purple that we used as our initial shadow colors, and I'm gonna thin those way down to a wash consistency and slap a few coats on his face. The thing to keep in mind with washes is that they take longer to dry than they do to apply. So make sure you wait for it to perfectly dry before you move on to another layer. As long as you're adding littler and littler sections in each successive wash, you will build up the most saturated color towards the tip of your tentacle face things, parts. So are the tentacles his teeth or his lips, his nose? These are the truly important questions in life. With all of our details done, except for the eyes, we're gonna move on to the base. And I think speed painted bases should look cool, but not take much time. So we're gonna bust out a couple of my favorite tricks to make this base pop in just a couple of minutes. After a quick dry brush, I bust out a few bottles of liquid talent, dirty down rust and verdigris. I just dip my brush into the pots and smash them around the areas of the base that look like they could be metal. And then I rinse the brush out in my water cup. And then I slop that around with a wet brush and it kind of gives us a much more natural effect. And while those dry and their magic starts to appear before our very eyes, I'm going to switch over to Squidman's eyes. And I'm gonna bust out my new favorite Bottle of Rage, Fire Breath Red Enamel Liquid Pigment. Now, because this is an enamel-based product, it means we're gonna have to use white spirits to both clean our brush and to feather out any of the color on the model, which is great because you've got a lot of room for mistakes when you're painting on eyes because we can just erase them even if the paint is already dried. Back to the base now that our rust and verdigris has dried. I'm just gonna bust out two pigment powders, one really dark brown and one an old rust color. I smash them all over the base and let them intermingle while still showing through some of the interesting effects we already laid down. And just like that, our base looks particularly grimy and war-torn in two steps in five minutes. So in summary, Smash Chop is a few simple steps. We smash down a bunch of bright, vibrant colors, and then using both a thin and a thick version of our midtones, we simply paint our model. And then if we want to, we can add as little or as many layers of highlights as we want. And just like that, you've got better speed painting, faster good looking painting, insert other selling point here, Oh, and if you think the name Smash Chop is terrible and cringy, don't blame me. Blame Will Hahn, the miniature painter who came up with the name. <laughs> Suck it, Will. I always have the same consistent message as we get to the point in the videos where I bring you along in my speed painting journey and how I like to speed paint now. And that is the best way to paint miniatures is the way you enjoy and the way that brings you back to the painting table again and again. And my hope is always that there's a little something in these videos that aid you in some small way on your painting journey. Whether you've never painted a model before or you're just hungry to try something a little bit different. And if you've enjoyed your journey with me here today, I hope you consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't. If you wanna to look to support me in other ways, there's a couple of great ways to do so. First of all, you can join my crew over on Patreon. The link's down in the description below for that, and you can see some great rewards you get for joining us there. Also, as long as you're buying miniatures, paints, 
and other tools for the hobby, why don't you check out the links down below where you can save even more money, get the best prices out there, and you support the channel in the process. Now, I'm going to be back here again next week with another video. And sometime between now and then, I hope you find time in your day to smash the gray.